Don't they like beat people up for smoking? Isn't it just a bunch of rich jocks? Do they think they're better than everyone? What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. This is the Punk Rock NBA, and in today's video, I'm gonna answer all those questions. We're gonna talk about the truth about Straight Edge. I actually think Straight Edge is really misunderstood in a lot of ways, and to be fair, they don't do themselves a lot of favors many times. Also, for those of you who like my charts, stay tuned because I got a great one in this video that breaks down all the different types of Straight Edge kids. Also, two things before I get into it. Number one, my podcast is coming January 6th, so if you're interested in that, hit the link in the description below to subscribe and get that the day it drops. Number two, I made a playlist for this video of a bunch of my favorite Straight Edge songs, so if you're interested in that, there's also a link to that in the description. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. We're cool and we don't do drugs and you, you can be cool and not do drugs too, you know? So first of all, for anybody who may not be familiar, let me just give you a quick history of Straight Edge and how I got into it. And this is not intended to be any kind of comprehensive history or list of bands. So please do not comment with like, no mention of this band or that band, you failed to mention, just don't. So it all started in 1981 when Minor Threat wrote a song called Straight Edge, which had these lyrics in it. They didn't intend it to be a movement or anything like that. They just wrote a song that happened to be called Straight Edge. And that song struck a chord with other people who were also kind of turned off by the whole self-destructive element of punk at the time. Specifically, some guys up in Boston at a band called SSD, who did kind of turn it into a movement along with some other bands like DYS and Slapshot and all those other early Boston bands. From there, it spread all over the country with I would say the next big development being Youth of Today and the whole like Revelation record scene in the mid 80s around New York City. And that was my entry point into Straight Edge, although I discovered it a couple years later in the early 90s, a few years after that scene was already over. It's music with a message for fans of the movement called Straight Edge. I somehow knew what Straight Edge was, but I didn't listen to any of the bands really until I think 92 or 93, when I just randomly picked up a cassette copy of the Youth of Today album, Break Down the Walls. I was into the whole album, but really I specifically remember this line that just like hit me like a bolt of lightning. I was just like, yes, this is what I've been looking for. This is what I've been thinking, but I didn't know anybody else felt this way. I'd been into punk and hardcore and metal and stuff for a couple years at that point. Bands like Black Flag, Circle Jerks, The Accused, Sepultura, Suicidal Tendencies, all that kind of stuff. And as much as I loved the music and still do, there was that whole element of kind of like anger and negativity and self-destructiveness that just I wasn't into. I didn't like it because honestly, it just reminded me of my family and a lot of our friends. My mom was a great woman who had an addiction. What's going on? DJ's mother is a recovering alcoholic. Like I mentioned in a couple of my other videos, my mom was an alcoholic. She raised me by herself on welfare for the first few years. And you know, probably a lot of you guys grew up in a similar way. And as you can relate to, it's not super fun. I did not enjoy it. She did stop drinking when I was pretty young, which was a step forward. But still, because of that, I spent a lot of my time as a you know five or six year old kid going to AA meetings with her. So I was sitting in some gross, dingy church basement in 1986 in Everett, Washington, <laughs> watching people chain smoke and talk about how drugs and alcohol destroyed their life. Super happy environment for a six-year-old, right? I've been there and I don't want any of my kids to go through that. And besides her, there are a bunch of other people in my family that had addiction issues. I don't wanna to get too specific because a lot of them are still alive and I don't wanna air their dirty laundry here. A bunch of them went to prison for drug related stuff. And you know, by the time I was nine or 10, I had heard stories from them about like shooting up in your neck because all the veins in your arms had collapsed. Again, super cheery stuff for a 10 year old to be hearing about, right? And because of that, I was very, very, very anti-drug and alcohol from the beginning. I was like, fuck that. I'm never gonna fucking be like my mom or any of her friends. Like, no, not gonna happen. I made that decision long before I ever knew what punk or hardcore was. And so when I found Youth of Today, I was just like, oh my God, it exists. It was like that moment in Indiana Jones or something where they like finally see the treasure, like, oh. It's a movement that has attracted tens of thousands of young people across the country its popularity spreading through recordings and amateur magazines, as well as the internet. 
So I discovered Use It Today and Bold and Gorilla Biscuits and Judge and all those bands. And again, this was like 92 or 93, right about when Earth Crisis was starting to blow up and the whole like vegan straight edge boom in the mid nineties was kind of beginning, which I won't talk about here in detail because I already made a whole video about that, which you can check out if you want to learn more about it. But that was my world for the next like seven or eight years. Hardcore and specifically like straight edge, my whole world as a teenager revolved around that. But guess what? Just like everybody else, I sold out when I was 21. True to college is so real, only in my case, I wasn't even in college. Now, I didn't like turn into some party animal overnight like a lot of people do. It was more just that my friends were going to bars and parties where people were drinking and they were having fun. And I was just like, you know what? They look like they're enjoying themselves and it's probably not gonna kill me to try it, so why not? So I did. I got drunk for the first time at 21 and I had no idea how to drink. So I drank way too much. I had like an entire 40 in like 20 minutes and a keg stand and I don't even know what else. I drank way too much. I woke up with one of the most awful, nasty hangovers of my entire life. And as of 21, I was officially no longer straight edge, I guess. Sellouts, okay, go ahead, call sellouts. I was straight edge for 20 years. There you are. There you are. Oh, you if can you're say not, that. If you're not, now you never were. That said, I was still very much into the like Youth of Today, Gorilla Biscuits kind of mindset of being positive and taking care of yourself. And I really didn't drink that much. After that one night where I kind of like went all in, from the time I was 21 till 30, I was maybe drunk 10 times. Like I just, I really wasn't into drinking that much. Till a couple years later when things got kind of bad, which I will talk about in a couple minutes. So why am I telling you all this? Because when I talk about the next section, I want you to understand where I'm coming from, that I've seen this from, I think, a few different angles, and I would like to think that I have a pretty balanced perspective of this thing. So with that said, let's answer the questions I asked at the beginning of this video, especially the big one. Are straight edge kids just a bunch of violent dicks that go around beating people up for smoking? Straight edge isn't about, you know, if you get in my face and you do drugs, I'm gonna beat you up. It's not what it's about. Well, I don't think there's any one answer to that question because with any large group of people, I think it doesn't make sense to paint them all with the same brush. I think you need to break them down into smaller groups that each have their own kind of unique motivations and psychology. So with straight edge people, I am breaking them up along two different axes. The first one is how strong their edge is. I'm using that kind of jokingly, but what that means is like how committed are they to being sober in general and specifically to the label of straight edge. And then second along this axis is how much trauma they've experienced. The trauma part is the really important thing for you to consider. I've never really heard somebody bring this up in the context of straight edge, but I want you to think about it because if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this video, it is this. To the extent that straight edge kids end up being like crazy violent assholes or turn into junkies or do any of that other like crazy shit that we roll our eyes at, it's because of trauma. Now, let me be clear, that's not an excuse for doing anything shitty, but I do think it should kind of change the way we think about it a little bit. So with that said, if you combine those two axes, you end up with these four boxes. And I hope it's obvious that I'm just joking around with the names I've put on these different segments. It's just a lighthearted thing. I'm not trying to put anybody down, just having fun with it. So don't take that part too seriously. If anybody ever does offer me drugs or alcohol, I'll be proud to say no because, um. I'm dedicated to straight edge. Okay, so the first box down here, we have what I'm calling the G-rated Boy Scout tourists. As you can see, they are low on edge and low on trauma. These are kids who grew up in like happy, normal, squeaky clean homes and ended up getting into straight edge because it's kind of like the G-rated, slightly edgier alternative to stuff like Skillet and MXPX. Oftentimes they're like youth group kids or maybe they heard about it through CM Punk or something like that. They heard there was a kind of punk rock where people didn't drink or smoke and they're like, yeah, my mom would be cool with that. Maybe she'll buy me that record. Because let's be honest, punk and hardcore culture can be intimidating to a lot of people because let's be real, it's full of fucked up people that do crazy shit. I'm just saying that there's too much focusing on the violence and nobody's hearing the message. Okay. And I called them tourists, not as like a put down, but because for these people, generally they don't become hardcore lifers. It's usually something they just kind of dabble in for a couple years before turning into normies, before starting a family and buying a house and getting your career going and all that other stuff that normal people do that people in punk and hardcore often Sometimes don't do until they're much later in life, like myself. And I don't think anybody really dislikes these people, right? I mean, maybe they're a little lame or corny, but nobody hates these people, they're harmless. Like when someone says straight edgers suck, they beat my friend up for smoking. They're not talking about these people, so let's move on. 
a kid's identity, you know, is forming at this time, and I think that if they can find something constructive and positive to join with, I think that's really important. The next group up here, they're high on edge and low on trauma. This is the group that I'm calling the sheltered edge warriors. These are the people who, for some reason, are like really, really aggro about being straight edge, but nobody can really figure out why. Because like the Boy Scouts below them, they grew up in like pretty normal, like relatively healthy families, and they don't seem to be reacting to any kind of trauma that they experienced. I think for a lot of these people, it's about group identity at the end of the day. They couldn't skate or play basketball. They didn't want to like do the school newspaper. They didn't want to join a youth group. So they just kind of fell into straight edge as a place for them to belong and wrap their identity around. And these people can be a little bit annoying, especially when they take it to the extreme, because it's like, why are you acting like the world's out to get you? Literally, nobody cares that you don't drink. But because their own self-image is tied to being like the straight edge guy, they can't not be aggro about it. Because if they stop being aggro about straight edge, well then who are they? What is their identity? They have nothing left. In fact, I don't actually think that most of them really truly feel that strongly about straight edge. I think it's just like a thing that they kind of have to keep doing because it's their identity. That said, I really haven't personally encountered a lot of these people. I think a lot of people assume or want to believe that every straight edge kid falls into this category. That's where the whole like rich jock stereotype comes from. But I'm not so sure that's true. Let's be honest, rich jocks have way cooler things to do with their time than go to hardcore shows with a bunch of nerds in some basement somewhere. The idea of straight edge was born in the early 80s, but it's remained largely underground. It's always attracted the type of kid who wants to belong to something. Now, here is where it gets interesting. Down here in the lower right, this is where we have what I'm calling the future junkies, or you could also say former junkies. It really doesn't matter because the common thread here is addiction. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, addiction? What does that have to do with straight edge? Aren't those like the opposite? No, they are flip sides of the exact same coin. I think for a lot of people, straight edge is really like a desperate last ditch attempt at avoiding falling into addiction. Sometimes it's a conscious thing, sometimes it's unconscious, but either way, the line between straight edge kid and drunk is actually a razor, razor thin one, and people go between it all the time. And to be clear, this isn't me looking down on them like, you fucking sellouts, you were never really straight edge. And that's exactly what straight edge does, applying peer pressure to stay straight. It's not that at all. It's more just a recognition that these are troubled people who oftentimes tend to jump from one extreme to the other. The black and white thinking that a lot of addicts fall into. If you've been around a lot of recovering addicts, you know what I mean? One day they're all about partying, the next day they're all about their 12-step program, and then maybe next week they're like a hardcore Christian or a CrossFitter or whatever. Like they're just bouncing around between all these crazy extremes. And at the root of all that is that addict energy that's just channeling itself in a different directions. And I would actually probably include myself in this group, unfortunately. Like I mentioned earlier, I kind of ended up going pretty hard on the drugs and alcohol when I was in my early 30s. And I haven't really talked about this publicly publicly before because to be honest, I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed of it, but I decided that I'm gonna talk about it more as embarrassing as it is because hopefully it'll help somebody else that's going through the same shit. Just sip a beer or if you just take a drag out of a cigarette, you can never call yourself straight edge again. There's no slipping up in straight edge. And to make a long story short, what happened is that I was going through some really intense, shitty personal stuff that kind of pushed me over the edge of being able to cope. And like a lot of people in that situation, I turned to drugs and alcohol to self medicate. I didn't intend to do this and I didn't really realize it until it was too late. But before I knew it, I was one of those people who had made partying my lifestyle for like two or three years. And it was really scary because as much as when I was younger, I swore like I would never be like my mom and our friends. Here I am. I woke up one day and I was like, oh fuck, I'm doing exactly the same shit as my mom did when she was my age. Fuck. How did this happen? Like, how did I let myself become this person? Fortunately, I was able to get my shit together. It never ended up being like a huge problem for me. But man, for a while there, it was pretty fucking dark and I really wasn't sure whether I was gonna make it out or not. And I know that I am far from alone on that one. There's a lot of straight edge kids who end up in that situation. There's a lot of us that are fighting that addict energy inside. And for those of us in that category, straight edge is almost like a suit of armor that you put on to defend yourself against addiction. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. My next guests say that all those straight edge members talk of being positive role models. In reality, they say they're intolerant hate mongers. And next up, easily the most hated group of straight edge people, what I'm calling the crazy crew kids. These are the people who have a super strong edge, but have also, unfortunately, oftentimes experienced a lot of trauma. 
Now, me personally, I have only had good experiences with these people. For whatever reason, they were always super cool and nice to me. I ended up being pretty good friends with a lot of them, but I get why other people feel the way that they do because let's be honest, these guys have fucked up a lot of people, oftentimes for, unfortunately, no particularly good reason. And people think a straight edge, they think, you know, they want a duck, they think they're gonna get hit. You know? Now, I do not at all like condone or excuse violence in any way, but I do wanna ask why. What would make somebody so angry and violent? I don't think they were like born with a demon and inside them or something. I think it's a cycle. This is what happens when something shitty happens to you, it fucks you up and you have to do something with that energy. For some of us, we channeled that inward into self-destructive things with drugs and alcohol and other stuff. Other people channel that outward. They wanna take it out on the world through violence. And to be specific, I think the common thread with a lot of people in this bucket is physical abuse as a child. Like thinking about a few people in particular that I know, both of them grew up with abusive shithead dads that beat them and their mom. I can't say that I would've turned out any different if I grew up in the same circumstances. Again, this is not to say that it's okay. It is categorically not okay to be a violent asshole. These people are responsible for their own actions. They do not get a free pass no matter what happens to them. But I do think that we should ask ourselves why and maybe look at it with a little bit more compassion than we oftentimes do. With all the youth culture embracing drugs and alcohol, but sometimes violence does have to be used. Well, and this is probably a good place for me to bring up one thing that drives me just absolutely nuts about anytime straight edge comes up, there's always somebody that's like, those guys are assholes. They beat people up for smoking at shows. Like some kid is just standing there outside a show, smoking, minding his own business, and pow! Straight Edge McEdgerson runs up behind him and smacks him in the side of the head with brass knuckles out of the blue just for smoking a cigarette. I'm gonna say that that has never happened. I think that is an urban legend, but hey, maybe I'm wrong. Please let me know in the comments and I will stand corrected. You'd let one of these kids babysit your children. You'd probably be psyched if your daughter brought one home. They are straight edge. All right, and lastly, the group that I believe comprises the vast majority of straight edge kids, the relatively cool, chill straight edge kids that don't really cause too many problems for anybody. The people in this big red bubble in the middle. But note that this bubble kind of overlaps all the other squares, meaning that even among the relatively cool, normal straight edge kids, you're still kind of at least a little bit in one of these other boxes. Because let's be real, if you get into hardcore, especially like straight edge hardcore, which is like whole extra layer of like lifestyle weirdness, you gotta screw loose. Hardcore is not where normal people go to hang out. Out here in Reno, the shows are more aggressive. And really, that's what I want people to take away from this video. Yes, straight edge kids are flawed human beings. Yes, they do some dumb, irritating, thoughtless, stupid shit. I know I did and continue to do so all the time, no matter how hard I try not to. Straight edge kids are not perfect. You may find the whole idea of straight edge off-putting and irritating for whatever reason, but I think this whole like rich jock bully stereotype is just frankly bullshit. Straight edge tends to attract youngsters who've seen the effects of drugs and alcohol. When I look at straight edge kids, what I see are a lot of kids that are more or less like me and probably a lot of you. People who grew up in a family where addiction fucked them up in one way or another. And because of that, they turned to straight edge because they said, I don't necessarily know what I'm supposed to do or what I want, but I know I sure don't fucking want that. And is straight edge the ultimate answer to your life's problems? Probably not. Does straight edge make you better than anyone else? Absolutely not. Are there judgmental dicks in straight edge? Yes, there's plenty of judgmental dicks in every single pocket of metal and punk and hardcore. So I hardly think that straight edge people have a monopoly on that. But ultimately what I wanna say with this video is we're all in this together. If you're a straight edge kid that gets up on your high horse, stop, it's not cool. The fact that you don't drink or do drugs does not make you better than anybody else. And also, nobody cares, so stop making such a big deal out of it. And if you're one of the people who thinks that all straight edge kids are like these horrible, rich, jock bullies, get your head out of your ass. That is bullshit. 90% of them are skinny nerds who collect Star Wars comics. And for me, I think I've fallen into a little bit of a rut that I wanna commit myself to getting out of. I've started to get kind of angry and judgmental about metal fans the same way that other people do about straight edge kids, and I think I need to stop. Those people will never not annoy me, but I think I need to stop making such a big deal out of it and doing so much of the us versus them stuff. Because remember, we're all on the same team here, so let's act like it.
This is how I live my life. No mercy for my enemies, no mercy for their souls. Definitely something to mosh to. All right, everybody, there you have it. My thoughts on the whole straight edge thing. I probably could have added another half hour to this because I've got a lot more to say about it. Maybe I'll do a part two of this or something. I don't know. Again, I did make a playlist for this with some of my favorite straight edge songs. Some of them are totally ridiculous and over the top, just to be clear, but I wanted to include them just for fun. So if you want that, check it out at the link in the description. Check out the podcast again at the link in the description. The first one comes out on January 6th. So subscribe now to make sure you get that when it comes out. And also I want to thank everybody who sponsors me on Patreon at the true cult level or above. It is because of your support that is finally able to get the podcast off the ground and hire an editor to do all the stuff that I just frankly didn't have time to do on my own. So thank you guys very much for your support. I appreciate it very much. If you'd like to sponsor me on Patreon, there's also a link to that in the description. And with that, I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you next time.